Taranaki artist Stuart Greenhill never imagined that buying an historic building would lead to foraging for berries, bringing local flavour to his new start-up distillery. When I started making the gin, I thought, gosh, I could utilise some of these places and go and collect the botanics. And it's really cool. You know, you're walking through bush um, and people come through and they're so friendly here. They say, hello, how are you going? And, and you go through and you pick your botanics. And um, I might see some marrow berries, depending on the type of the season. And I'll pick those up and I'll look and I'll find my kawakawa. Um, and often there's a fantail flying around or something like that. And it's just meditative, I could just stay in there forever. And that's my happy spot, really getting into the bush, looking for my botanics and collecting them and knowing the quality of them. That's the key thing. They haven't been anywhere near sprayed. At 313 metres above sea level, you get none of the manky things down in sea level, like um, kawakawa moths and the sun bleaching, because it's all in the substory that I collect. So it's, it really is a bonus uh, to get botanics that you know are fresh, um, they haven't been sprayed um, and you can collect them yourself in the morning and the frost is down. I love going out in winter, the frost is down, you've got your beret on, you've got your coat on, your cards up. And quality is everything when your craft is making artisan gin. Is it the Remo? Uh, no, it's going to be the Miro first. Yeah. Your Miro first. Oh, that Bahuda Yeah, it is, yeah. It's, 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 now, his local community in Stratford is catching on. I've had locals come up and say, do you want anything? And I'd say, oh yeah, I'd like some marrow berries and they'll go and get them for me. I've had people come in and say, do you want honey? And I say, oh yes. And I say, oh, I know someone who's got honey. And they'll bring in five litres of honey. How much do you want? Oh, just have it. You know, it's just it's still old school in a lot of ways, that sort of mentality in the, in the provinces. You're still back in a time when people are generous um, and supportive. After looking around New Zealand for an old building to rescue, Stuart and his partner Joe, who were living in Tauranga at the time, settled on the old Egmont Chambers premises. We were looking all over New Zealand for a building to save and Joe found this. And I wanted to go overseas and she said, no, let's buy a building. And I said, put in a stupid offer and we'll just see. So she put in a really ridiculous offer and the guy sold it to her. It was on the books at about a uh, uh, 150,000 and I sort of put an offer for 50,000, bit cheeky, I thought, oh no, we'll never get it, no, you know, the building will be, be gone, but he actually said yes. It was a disaster, it was leaking, there were, no one was um, working downstairs, it was so bleak and cold, so, um, so we spent a fortune saving it basically. And so that made it worthwhile for us to do the renovation and the earthquaking and turn it into a viable building, save a building that was 100 years old in um, Stratford. It was really important because the history behind this building and history in general was really a part of our passion. Um, and it tied in with our art um, as, and in my writing as well. So saving the building and then getting a heritage listed was the key. Breathing new life into the 1920s building was a priority and it quickly grew beyond a renovation. And we thought, oh well, how about we put a gallery in and a little coffee machine, espresso bar, and we'll have people come wander around, look at the art and, and enjoy it. But it kind of morphed out of control, so it's now become a fully fledged cafe, espresso bar. And then Stuart decided to do gin. Gin was doing really well over in Europe, and I thought, well, let's see if we can do the gin. And the gin's kept us going, and it's kept us open, and the gin's going really well. He decided to add a third string to the bow, just to keep it interesting. And so now we are Fenton Street Distillery, Espresso Bar and Gallery. Venture Taranaki's Jennifer Patterson says Fenton Street is a great example of how a small business can help bring the community together. It has lots of different work streams, which is one of the really good examples of a small business in a small town succeeding through being versatile and being adaptable to its different markets. So some great examples of that, it's a cafe, lovely coffee, and you expect that in Taranaki, of course. Um, but there's also this beautiful gallery, they're featuring local artworks. They're also making gin in the back room, but as well as that, they have some really neat meeting spaces. When you've got a community like this where the buildings keep getting stripped away and reduced to a placard on a post that says this was once here, um, we've, we've used that 
um, as a um, stimulus to encourage people in the community to become part of us. So Joe's art, so the art that she's done, the life drawing where we've got nudies all over upstairs on, on a Sunday, um, all those parts of the community, all those aspects, sorry, of um, Fender Street draw in the community. So we've got the Baudrick's Big Day Art, the Shakespeare, for example, the art upstairs, the gym and the coffee. So all those things bring in the community. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's lovely because a lot of rural towns have the same problem. They've got a lot of old buildings. Um, they've got spaces that could be, you know, you, if you go to Wellington or you go to Auckland or you go to Christchurch, you know, there are these places, these old buildings that people have the vision to to turn into something really interesting. And I thought, why can't that be here in Stratford? You know, Stratford's a little rural town. Why can't we do that too? And so that's what we've done. We've just turned it into this, this interesting, eclectic sort of space that people can come to. And, um, you know, we've loved it. It's been a great project. Really enjoyed it. Look, Stratford faces a lot of the problems that any small town faces. Empty shops, lack of population, all of those kind of things are a real challenge for New Zealand small towns. This town is really embracing its own identity and, and this little place is a great example of how to do that with the Shakespearean theme, with the multiple different opera offerings, with the, the beautiful artworks from local artists. Like there's lots of reasons for people to come here. It's not just Shakespearean history Stuart and Joe are embracing. Their customers are also developing a taste for local vegetation. At the gym I'm using local ingredients where I can so we go foraging in the bush. Um, we go close to the mountain but not on the mountain to get the horopito. I think altitude increases the, uh, the, the uh, heat of that. Um, we use uh, pinnaspore nugenoides or terata, we use mero berries, we use rimu, all those sorts of things that we can get local go into the gym. Um, and some of us, we take the staff out when we go and get mero berries, the farmer climbs the tree and chomp, chomp, chomps and all the wood pigeons fly around and we're underneath it holding sheets and all the little berries fall down. So it's a day out for, this, for us all, so that's good. I can't, I have no science in this, I'm we're artists and writers, so how I make a gym is based on a story. So the poet, I'm a poet and a novelist, hence the poet and the novelist, Jim. Joe's an artist, so I've made the artist. And the latest one is uh, The Merry Wives of Windsor. And Joe's doing the play in June in Stratford for that. So that's wonderful. Stratford has its own theme around the Shakespeare and, and this cafe has really bought into that as well. There's lots of items here that, that fit the, the Shakespearean theme and, and I know the town really embraces that and they're really proud of that. We've got a wonderful cultural heritage, our Shakespeare heritage here. It's our point of difference in the whole of New Zealand. Why, why not use it? All our streets are named after Shakespeare. And in recognition of all their renovation efforts, Stuart and Joe won the Western Institute's Architectural Award. And that's something the region would like to see even more of. There's lots of heritage buildings all over Taranaki. We've got a real history of industry in Taranaki and the landscape reflects that. So to be able to take some of those buildings that might otherwise be condemned, turn them into something beautiful while at the same time retaining some of the original features of the place, that, that just adds to the story. Because history is really important. If you haven't got history, you've got, a, you, you've got an emptiness inside you and you need to be able to identify where you've come from, what your values are, um, to actually grow. And if you've got that bit of history missing, you, you've got a void and it doesn't work. So um, having the building, again, going back to the building, the building holds the community together because so many people in this community look at this building and think, I remember it. I remember going there with my mum and my dad. And we've tried to keep as many of the features here authentic as they were when, we, when it was built. So that's why we got an architectural award for the building from um, Western Institute of Architecture because we've kept all the old features and brought in some of the, like the steelwork and so on, um, without hiding it. So everything's still authentic and honest. Um, and that's what makes this building important. That's what makes us important. We're honest and authentic if we've got a history to attach to. Venture Taranaki is a regional development agency and that includes tourism stuff but also economic development. And so we're really pleased that places like this exist because of the multiple different contributions that they make to the economy and to the, the entrepreneurship ecosystem of the whole region. Venture Taranaki is hoping other aspiring entrepreneurs take confidence from the success of Fenton Street. 
I hope it's, we're sending a message out there to people to say, you know, you can actually, don't be afraid of doing something interesting and alternative or getting an old building and turning it into something different. Um, I think a lot of people just get a little bit scared about that, that concept, it's going to be too expensive or it's going to be too hard. Well, if you don't, if you don't try, you'll never know, you know. We proved you can actually do it, you can save an old building, it hasn't cost a fortune. In fact, we've got this lovely, we've got a lovely home and we've got a business, um, which is all part of, um, um, I couldn't have purchased a piece of land and built a house for what I created here or spent to create here. Yeah, so we're really lucky that way. Fenton Street has been such a versatile little business with all of its different market streets. And if others in town have business ideas that they want to explore and they see this and they say, hmm, yeah, maybe, maybe if I were to just do this one thing it wouldn't work, but maybe if I drew a few different strands together, pulled it all together in a bundle, it might seem strange, but maybe it will work. Who has ever pulled together a gallery with a gin distillery with a cafe before? Where has that combination worked before? Maybe nowhere, but it's working here. So you can be innovative and maybe it will work. You can give it a crack. And hopefully this place will inspire some people to give it a crack. Stratford now offers a little cosmopolitan with Fenton Street becoming a destination. The London um, Medical Journal did a study on uh, drinkers and they found people who drink gin are seen as the most sexy and people who drink gin think they're sexy as well. So it's a win-win it's a all around really. Lisa Bird, Local Focus.